Uh, I'm John Talbot. I've um, been a long-term member here. I first came in 1978 and was here for about 25 years and then I just spent the last 18 years in Australia. But I've just come back uh, to be here and to help with the uh, rebuilding after the loss of the CC and the sanctuary. <laughs> My name's uh, Tara Gibson. I, I grew up here in the community, born and raised. Uh, have been away for the past seven years or so, traveling and studying, and have recently moved back. Um, and I'm now working on local partnerships, working more within the Scotland region to uh, share and connect what we have learned and gathered here in Fintorn um, in the more national arena. Yeah. Um, and my work when I first lived here was really helping to trans translate um, our ideals of cooperation and co-creation with nature into the built environment. Um, when I first came in the early, or late 70s, early 80s, we were all still living in caravans and we didn't own the land. And then the idea came that we should really try to live a little <clears throat> bit more in harmony with nature in our, in our houses and dwellings and uh, the buildings that we had. Um, and that launched, uh, the whole impulse for the eco-village was what launched our appeal to buy the caravan park and to actually own the land. Um, and during the 80s then we, we were able to buy the caravan park and start the eco-village, but we also didn't have any money at the time so we dreamt into what does it mean to really be a sustainable community. And um, it, it took quite a few years to kind of feel into that so that we didn't kind of rush off and do something we regretted later. Fintorn was one of the founding members of GEN um, in the early days. GEN being the Global Eco Village Network, which brings together communities worldwide, um, working towards living sustainably together, a low impact lifestyle, and redesigning our human presence on this planet, whether it's socially, economically, and ecologically. Um, so yeah, back, we were one of the founding members of GEN and continue to uh, hold their international offices here in the, in the park. Um, continue to um, connect these wonderful communities around the world. And it's, um, it's so relevant now because of um, what's going on in Glasgow with COP26 and the world leaders are gathering and I think with, with Fintorn but also the wider Global Eco Village Network, this is, this, these are issues that we've been trying to wrestle with and, and um, find solutions for for decades. Um, and so it's, it's heartening to feel the world leaders coming together to try to find solutions. And we're very hopeful that they might take some lessons from what, what we've learned, um, but also um, make some real commitments that, that will make a difference to our, our climate change policy in the world. Uh, and yeah, Fintorn, we will also have a, a small voice at COP. We are, we are joining through SCAN, which is the Scottish Communities Climate Action Network. Uh, so they have a space in the green zone where they will be showcasing the work of their partners throughout Scotland. Uh, and we will be going down and sharing some, also some audiovisual material that showcases some of our work here at Fintorn, along with other communities across yeah. Scotland, working towards these similar goals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think it is a United Nations event and we've had a relationship with the United Nations for many, many years and are a recognized NGO, non-governmental organization, largely because of the Eco-Village work uh, and so is Jen. And so we've aligned ourselves with the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Um, we've been UN Best Practice Award winners in the late 90s and then that was reaffirmed, reconfirmed in 2018. Um, we've had lots of successful partnerships with other um, UN agencies, including the uh, local government training through CFAL. Mm -hmm. um, there was a partnership with our local <coughs> council as well. So there's a long, um, quite rich relationship with the United Nations um, that hopefully we have some small influence <laughs> with all those world leaders. <laughs> Um, and yeah, maybe, maybe finally, uh, the, the work here still continues. Recently, uh, Paddy Atkinson, along with the, I believe, Strathclyde University, have been exploring how we can uh, reach carbon neutrality by 2030. So we're still exploring uh, best practice avenues and how we can continue reducing our, our carbon here in the park. If we can do carbon neutrality by 2030, <laughs> I hope we can do it sooner than that. But there's no reason that um, everybody else in the world can't do it either. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
we're just uh, bumbling amateurs that are doing our best. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's completely possible if you have the right motivation.